Okay, so let's very quickly take a look at what this data can do for us. So if we have initial rate constant data, or initial rate data, which are denoted by the blue dots here and the figure on the left hand, we can then take this equation and just like a ligand binding uh, curve, we can fit this equation to the data. <clears throat> now, of course, there are linearization ways to do this as well, uh, where you can transform the data in a way that's, uh, that should have a linearized form, uh, and then you can determine uh, from that both Vmax, which again is up here, and Km. And those are the two uh, parameters that you're looking for. So what those mean, once again, is that Vmax is this asymptote. So this is the highest velocity that, uh, that can be achieved with uh, when all of the sites are saturated. So uh, that all the enzyme is converted to enzyme substrate complex. And Vmax is uh, related to Vmax over uh, E0 equals Kcat, which in this case, Kcat uh, is equal to K2. Okay. So it's the, uh, it's the chemistry step, the rate constant for the chemistry step, where the enzyme substrate complex is being converted to product and being released simultaneously. Okay? So these are the two terms that we're looking for uh, when we solve this, is Km and Kcat. And so we can also visually inspect the curve uh, for Km, uh, because when we do this fit, what we can do is find out what Vmax is, look for one half Vmax, project the line, to our michaelis menten plot, and then project that down to the x-axis. And the substrate concentration that this crosses is going to be equal to Km. Okay, so we can either do this from the plot, or we can do this from the equation. All right, and so what these data give us is, again, Kcat gives us information on, uh, on the rate constant for conversion, in this case, of enzyme substrate complex to enzyme plus product. Km, however, is a little bit more tricky because remember, Km is ties in several rate constants that are involved here, and so this is equal to K minus one plus K two all over K one. All right. So interestingly, the numerator contains rate constants. Uh, for uh, consumption of ES. So in this case, K minus 1 consumes ES and converts it back to enzyme and substrate. K2 consumes ES and converts it to enzyme plus product. The denominator has rate constants, has the sum of the rate constants that form ES, the ES complex. And so there's only one, and that's K1 here. Okay, and so this takes the form, then, of a dissociation constant. So, again, in the analogy that we're looking at uh, between this hyperbolic equation and the hyperbolic equation for O2 binding to myoglobin, uh, you can think of this kind of as KD. Remember, KD is also in the form, of, KD is a dissociation constant. So it's going to have the units of molar or micromolar or millimolar. This will have the same units. However, it's important to note that these are not the same because Km is equal, again, to the numerator contains rate constants uh, for consumption of ES, while the denominator uh, contains rate constants uh, for its formation. KD, however, is simply defined as this equilibrium right here. So KD for the substrate, for instance, would be K minus 1 over K1. So very often, Km is described as a way to look at binding affinity of substrate for the enzyme substrate complex. However, Kd is the true measure uh, for this affinity, not Km. And that's, again, because even though K-1 and K1 are in the proper place, you have this third term, K2, which is going to affect the numerator. And so that can, uh, that can really affect uh, what that that can really affect uh, if K2 is much larger than, uh, for instance, uh, then this is going to dominate the numerator, and this is not going to resemble the uh, binding affinity at all. It's 
not going to resemble the actual dissociation constant. So you have to be careful on how you interpret Km um, in this case. But it does give you uh, it does give you an idea of a range of a ballpark <coughs> for what the affinity uh, for the substrate for the enzyme might be.